All right. Taiwan special time. I've been contemplating and thinking and today on our Taiwan special, I've just got done officially making the announcement uh, on the podcast. So up, up until this, it's been kind of uh, maybe beta. It, what, what, what do we call it? Like pilot episode? No, 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 no. George is here. He's right over there. I'm not, I'm not going to do stuff without George. See, he disappeared. See, you don't know this, but that's, uh, that's George making my hand disappear. Okay. It's not, all right. Fine. They're not going to believe that. That's it's fine. But don't, don't think that by listening to Taiwan special, you're going to get out of listening to George. Don't think about that. You know what? I wanted to talk about, uh, recently I did the, the USB thing, right? I plugged the two USBs and in, in one of the, the first three Taiwan specials before that, I think it was the second one, number two, where I booted up to Ubuntu on a USB and showed how governments can use this to receive open source media files or probably any media files. I mean, I, the, the, the LibreOffice is on Ubuntu, at least on 1804, version 1804. And, ah, uh, yeah, it can open up a lot of different types of documents. Well, I mentioned that I was going to talk about Taiwan and open source. Here's what Taiwan's premier did. Now, the current premier of Taiwan is William Lai. I never wanted to call him William. I know him by his Chinese name, Lai Qingde. And he, uh, you know, Lai, William Lai, Lai Qingde, Lai. Lai. They say the, the surname first. So he's uh, the premier, which is Xinjiang Yanzang. And he was Sizang, which is, it's like mayor, but they call it a city and the mayor when it should be maybe a province and a governor. Um, but they've got English translation problems because frankly, they need more Americans, which is one of the reasons I'm doing the Taiwan special. We need, we need Westerners around Asia. I don't care what your politics are. We need cultural exposure. Trump went to China and said, our people and your people, our people need to meet each other more. And he's absolutely right. So we need, we need more Americans all over the place. So part of that whole, it should be a province. They call it a city and likewise, governor, mayor. Lai Qingde, William Lai, was the mayor of the city where I was in. So I knew this guy. Now, long ago, he did, there was a, a dengue outbreak. And he... Um, well, I don't know. You know, I talked about that in front of City Hall in the video I was going to give to the State Department. You know what I'm going to do? There was a video I made standing in front of Tainan City Hall where Lai Qingde used to work. He, he was the mayor there before he became the premier. Now, the, the premier is kind of like a chief secretary. Uh, kind of like half of the powers of the president, kind of. But the president should still have authority. It's an appointed position. So Taiwan has a president, Tsai, and then it has a premier, which is an appointment, it's like a super secretary, uh, managing executive stuff, doing a lot of executive, executive work. Um, they get along great. He was really, you know what? I'm going to save this stuff. I was going to give it to the state department, but they don't know how to plug a USB into a computer or how, you know, however that works. I don't know if, if the, if the deputy director of that, uh, American envoy to Taiwan, uh, was making up her own policy or following policy. It's not for me to judge. I'm not worried about it, but whatever it was, the state department wasn't going to receive a digital media. I wanted to show them a video to tell them what I thought politely. They didn't want that. So I'm going to go put it on YouTube. You know, I, I, you know, so maybe I'll include that in the Taiwan special series. Watch for it. Um, might only be available on YouTube. Might only be available on YouTube. These Taiwan specials could be difficult. So I might set, schedule them to release uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they might be on YouTube on a slightly different schedule, maybe earlier, because I, I can't set it to release earlier. But I know if you're doing podcasts, like like this, this Taiwan special was actually recorded on Monday, and it's scheduled to release as a podcast on Tuesday. So that's just because I know podcast listeners have their routine thing. So, so you know what's going on. But sometimes there'll be videos... I'll put a video or something and comment on it. And you're going to need to see that on the YouTube channel or follow social media. I, I, I do Instagram. I'll, I'll be doing, I'll be making stuff available uh, to people with this. Okay. So I'm going to take what I had to say about Lai Qingda and Dengue. And I'm going to put that up in the Taiwan special series um, on the YouTube channel separately. And I don't know. I might, I might do audio or not. 
frankly, I don't care. But I want to talk about what Lai Tingda did. He's he, really brilliant things he did to solve dengue using salt water. Um, frankly, I kind of think the whole island of Taiwan should be covered in salt water and kill all the mosquitoes once and for good. Or all and for once or however that... Anyhow, so... Mm, I love being in Taiwan where I can go just get a huge, enormous thing of tea for under a dollar. Fresh tea. I mean, if you think that you like Pennsylvania lemonade, or tea, excuse me, Pennsylvania iced tea, you have not tasted Taiwan. I'm forever ruined. I will not love tea in America again. I've, I've been spoiled and ruined. What I, what the, the premier, it's called the executive branch. I, there, there are, I think, five branches of government in Taiwan. One extra is that they take the president and they move that, they move the president's cabinet away from the president and they give this other little super boss over the, the super secretary over the cabinet. And that's called the premier. China's similar. Other countries do the same thing. So the president, premier. Premier is like a super secretary because the cabinet's different. Now, the president appoints them all. They're not voted for. But then there's another branch called the control and it's their job to do audits or uh, audits, uh, impeachment, that sort of thing. If, if the Mueller, if, if we have this, these five branches of government or three or four, however they say it works, if we had these five in America, uh, then, then Robert Mueller would be working under the control, uh, the control yen or the control branch. It's called yen, uh, the, the executive yen, the, the, the legislative yen, the judicial yen, Y-U-A-N, Y-U-E-N, depending on how, but it means the branch, the, the, the control branch, the control yen, or whatever. Anyhow, um, that was a problem a few years ago when the, when, the, when the Sunflower students took over Taiwan's legislature. One of their big concerns, which kind of got shoved to the back of the headline stack, was that the pre Taiwan's president at that time, different president, wanted to buy F-16s, super friendly with China, angry we weren't delivering our F-16s, trying to set up secret meetings with China that the U.S. wouldn't be at, where he would be able to discuss F-16s. No one mentioned that in Taiwan. They were concerned about trade. But a lot of weird stuff going on under that guy. And during his time, the, the control yen, the control branch that would do impeachment investigations was basically closed for business. It was pretty much shut down. It wasn't like the offices were empty. Like that, that's how I understood it anyway. Like it wasn't doing its job. And that was one of the concerns that the students there told me. They said this, they, he pointed motion to it. says this, this is the, this is the control. They're supposed to investigate the president uh, as, as like a check and balance constantly, or, or, you know, they're constantly asking if the president's following the law and they're doing nothing right now because it's, it's led by, you know, just the president's taking control of everything. That was a concern back then. So that's a control. That's called a control. And you'll see that in maybe some stories sometime. But the control ministry, you know, that's, I don't know if it's British or what. I don't know where it comes from. So what was I talking about? Yes. The premier before Lai Tingda, before the current premier, this is after that other president, we got this new president, Tsai Ing-wen, from the other rival political party. For the first time ever, they had control of the legislature, and they also had a presidential victory. Because that other president, they call it black box secret meeting stuff, so bad, so controversial, so sell out to China, sell our country. We don't want to get gentrification like Hong Kong has. Hong Kong was supposed to be a, a test of what Taiwan would become, and they aren't happy with that. So th that's the word on the street anyway. That's what people are, you know, that, that's the thought. So they kept, um, like he was so unpopular that the other party just swept into power. So all of a sudden they control the legislature for the first time, and they also control the presidency for the second time. So that's President Tsai, the, the, the Taiwan president that called Trump, that Skyped Trump to congratulate him. And, and, it, and, and, China was angry, uh, of course. And she had a premier early in her presidency. William Lai, Lai Tingda, was still the, the mayor uh, in Tainan. He was very popular because he wouldn't accept corrupt money. But, but he was behaving himself a little bit younger. Yeah, again, I'm gonna, I got a video where I talk about him and Dengue and how awesome he is. But he, he was cool, gets along with the party, 
arguably more popular than her, but, but she was older and has been around longer and has a lot of experience. And he honored that. He really, it really was remarkable to watch the politics work out that way. It really was, it really was delightful. I mean, you know, John McCain died and there were a lot of Republicans kind of bucking heads with him, but you know, William Lai and President Tsai, they did not, they did not fight like that. It was really a nice, I'm not going to say others don't, but just those two, it was really, really nice to see. Um, and I, I, I wish that the fighting with McCain, I mean, McCain also would fight. I'm, I'm not going to disgrace the man. I'm, I want to try to be objective. I'm sad that he passed away. Uh, what is today or recently this past weekend? I'm sorry I didn't research the exact date, but um, I do believe it would be Sunday. So I'm, I'm, God rest his soul, but he was part of controversy and he received controversy. And I think it'd be nice if, uh, as he goes to rest in peace, it would be nice if uh, that political hotness within party politics, within a party, would also rest in peace. Um, not He wasn't the cause of it, um, but I'd, I'd like to see that go. Uh, that's something I would like to see go. Um, as much as I kind of didn't like John McCain, it's fun to make fun of him. Uh, I, I, I don't hate him. And, and I, I think it would be nice to have him still around and say stuff now and again. He, he said a lot of stuff that was nice. I'm, and I think that one of the best things McCain ever did was discover Sarah Palin. <laughs> so he's got a legacy that's going to live after him. Julie Meyer even prophesied that actually, if you can look up Julie Meyer. So President Tsai came in and she had her first premiere while the current premiere, now William Lai, was still mayor. So there's other premier. I don't know who he was. People talk about him. I don't know who he was. He said, no more Microsoft. Our government documents are all using Microsoft formats and we have to purchase licenses, software licenses from Microsoft to a tune of one billion, one billion. Oh. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, Carl Sagan, uh, billions and millions and millions and bi billions, a thousand million. So uh, it was a lot of, it was 1 billion local currency, which is about 33 million US dollars. Uh, you could, you could buy a few F-16s for that. Uh, you, you could buy a few missiles. For, you, could, you could buy some nice things for that. And they said, we're not going to be spending a billion Taiwan dollars uh, just so that we can open documents that we can open as open source documents without paying money. We're not going to do it anymore. So we're done with Microsoft. So now this is the premier head of the executive branch. He said, if you're in a government office or if you're in a university that gets government money, or if you're in a, some sort of a, of a nonprofit organization or, 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 or a private company getting government money, government contract. If you are in any government funded institution, you will not use Microsoft. We are not, you want to, if, if you still got it on your computer, we're not going to tell you not to turn it on, but all files required that the public uses, that you use, that you give to the government, that people need to, to use to fill out forms, rece receiving files, giving files, all the files we use will be open source file formats, not .doc, .odt, not .xls, .ods. We've, and, and he said, we've tried it in the past, but it was kind of a half-baked attempt and we quit. We're doing it. It's going to be hard, but we are not just giving money to Microsoft without a reason. There, there's no reason and purpose for that. Well, he left and William Lai, uh, Tingda, became the new premier. He's the premier now. And he's been talking smack at China. It, it's been lashing out. And China's a big, fat baby. You know, I mean, he's been shooting his mouth off. He says the same thing. We are not doing Microsoft proprietary software anymore. We're not doing it. We're, we're not going to... No, we're done. We are done. It's an unnecessary expense. It's a leech. I think that was brilliant that Microsoft did that. Now, from a government perspective, government should not be required to purchase a software license in order to function. It's government of the people, and so is open source software. Arguably, it's, it's against constitutionalism itself 
to use a proprietary software format when open source is available. And if open source isn't available, then it should be made available. So there's lots of free software that can be used. It's tr the thing about free software is open source, it's open source. It's open. We're talking, not talking free beer. We're talking free speech. That's the difference. It's not free beer. It's free speech. Basically open source software. It's like you can pop the hood, see the engine and make changes. If you want, you want to wreck your engine, you're allowed to with proprietary software, <coughs> Microsoft, you're not allowed to pop the hood on your own car and make changes. You know, some, some kid uh, was playing around and installed uh, the, the, the Macintosh software OS 10 on his PC because he was trying to do stuff and uh, Apple attacked him and, and he ran away and uh, was, was in Asia or something. I, I, I never met him, but what, what the heck? I mean, I, I, I mean, if I was FTC, I'd, I'd look at taking away licenses for Apple for doing that. What, what are you attacking some little kid trying to play with stuff and experiment with your software for? What, what the heck? What? I mean, that's, I, I that's borderline mental illness. Cause that's, that, that's like, that's like attacking imaginary ghosts. Let's chase. It's barking at ghosts. It, what? That guy's not a threat and making an example of him is not going to prove Apple to be a benevolent organization. They should pay the kid for being smart and hire him. Um, and why have a, why have your software structured in the first place so that it would be illegal for him to do that? It doesn't make any sense. So open source just means that you can play around with it and use it. It's, we're not talking about free beer because there is stuff that you got to pay for. Um, you know, hosting, you, you take your open, the, the way the business model works, open source business model, the way it works is you, you write your software and you show it to the world. You tell everybody, okay, this is my software. Now, once I make it work on my computer, you can't hack into it. See, look at the software. People go, oh, that's the software. Those are your plans. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to break into that. Just because you got blueprints to the vault doesn't mean that you can break into it with software. Blue, blueprints to a vault in the software world could prove that you're not going to be able to break into it for the most part. Everything can eventually theoretically be broken into, but it's very, very secure uh, because of how Linux works. You had lots of little tiny mini users, bot users in the computer, and each one of them has limited permissions and everything requires permission, 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 permission. And it's kind of negative and instead of positive, which is, which is important. It's like, you can only do that if you need to do that. In Windows, it's Anyone can do anything, but, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that. So we'll harass you. And then that's Windows uh, software security, which is a reason that Windows doesn't work well. It's like having a giant swimming pool and then everybody can pee in the pool. And, and, and the way Microsoft handles the problem is to run around and, and, and have the lifeguard wave their hand in front of your swimming suit underwater to see if there's warm water. That's how Microsoft handles security. Linux, everybody gets their own hot tub. And, uh, you want to pee in your own hot tub and swim in your pee. It's not a big swimming pool. So you're going to, it's going to be dense and thick if you want that, but you're not going to affect others. Everyone's got their own hot tub. So that's, that's one of the reasons Linux is so incredibly secure. So open source software is like that, uh, for the most part. And so you open it up to the world. Here's my software. If you want to improve it, improve it, R write, write it. Show me how it works. Write the suggestion. If I like it, I'll, I'll adopt it. If you see a problem, fix it. Go ahead. I'll look at it. I'll, 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 I'll check into it. And by the way, I have customers. If you want to be one, you're welcome. Cause I'm smart and made this. This is mine. If you're my customer, you need a feature. This is my software. I'll write your feature into my software. Cause I, I own this. You want me to work for you? Okay. Pay me for hosting and pay me for support. If you, I'm on call, you got a question, call me. And, and that it's kind of like free advertisements. It's, it's, it's a freemium business model. So we're talking free speech, not free beer. So that's open source and that's how it works with government. And Taiwan has done a great job of getting open source. And so being able to look at the software that you're using, being able to see it, it being developed by the people, it's the software of the people, the transparency of it all, the, the, the freedom of it all, how it is free for, you know, most people, uh, you know, it, software is free and you don't have to pay licenses to use it. You can pay for support if you want that 
that's how government should be doing computer file stuff. That's how they should be. And until the United States government is doing that as a standard and Congress understands that and they're using it and they know it. I mean, as soon as I get done with these phonics books that I'm writing, I'm going to publish my verb VIP Linux curriculum. And I really think Congress needs to see that. They need to go through my Linux curriculum and learn how computers work and make them a lot less tech phobic. We should not have tech phobes deciding law for technology, but we do. But in Taiwan, it's kind of a technocracy. You, you know, professors and, and engineers are, are very well respected. And so you get a premier that goes in there, they understand technology, they know software. They're surrounded, even though they're not an engineer, surrounded by them. So Taiwan knows how to do this, not because they're a different way or whatever. It's because they know. And in America, a lot of them began their careers. A lot of the people in Congress, even today, began their careers before they knew how to use a mouse. In, in Taiwan, they were designing our mice. They were designing and manufacturing our computer hardware. And even if, if you were the doctor, your dad was an engineer and he was designing it. So they knew how that worked. What they're doing is just frankly smart. And the U.S. needs to get on board. And it starts with the people. It should be unacceptable to use Microsoft documents for anything in government. It, it should be open source free unless Windows is completely free, completely open source. You can change it, install it anywhere you want. You don't have to pay money for Windows. Same with Microsoft Office. It's free. You can install it anywhere you want. You can change it. You can see the computer code. If that was Microsoft Windows and Office, yay. Same with Apple. Governments should not be using iPhones because it's proprietary. They should be using Android, which is open source. Open source. Brilliant, smart, tolerate no less, 